Shalom. Salama Siemi. Shalom. Greetings to all my Israelite brothers and sisters from around the world. Whether you are of the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the house of Israel, or you are grafted in to the house under the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. Greetings. Welcome. So I'm going to, we're finishing up a week where it has been very difficult. The struggles that are on out there, that have been out there, that are, that we understand is out there. It's It's beginning to show its face even more. And I wouldn't say beginning to, it's always been here. It's just when people see it, when they witness it, oh my goodness. See, it's easy to to say that this place is something other than, right? Because here's the problem that they always run into. Actions speak louder than words. So I don't care how they always try to say, well, we're not this, or we're not that, or we need to come together for healing. Well, you know, here's the thing. You can't really heal if you continue to have an attack. You can't really heal if you continue to stab, right? If you continue to maim, if you continue to wound, there's no healing in that. And see, it's funny because you have to understand how the Most High works. He understands that we were going to be in the lands of our enemies, the lands of our captors, our oppressors. So when you're listening to the rhetoric, you have to understand they're literally just trying to practice witchcraft. We stand with these folks. We stand, we pray, we pray, we stand. We stand, we pray. Now I'm going to get tough on crime, and we already know who that targets. Now I'm going to get tough on a crime bill, which we already know who it targets. But see, the problem that they're running into is that you have to remember, we're waking up. It may be slowly, but it's surely. Because every single time that they have an action, you have to understand the Most High allows these actions for the reaction of his people. See, we try to say, look, well, the Most High is going to deal with us nicely. No. No, he doesn't. See, nobody gets, well, (laughs) You don't come into this awakening with just a a tap or a soft nudge. Get on up now. Your, Your nap is over. No, 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 no. No, you don't get any of those nursing home, you know, uh, um, wake on up. It's, it's, it's time for, for, for dinner. No. See, what the Most High has to do, he has to violently shake people out of bed. Because let me tell you, it's 400 years and counting. (laughs) Because folks would rather stay asleep than actually deal with reality. See, you, you, you have to understand, we're in the age of zombies.
for both sides. Our people is experiencing zombieisms because all they can do is just do what they've been told to do for 400 years because they don't know any better. And not that they don't know any better, it's the fact that they see what's happening, but they don't want to respond because they rather keep eating the brains. I'm gonna eat what white supremacy tells me to eat. Eat the brains. And now you have literally on the other side, you've had a zombieism that's been here for 400 years. And if you didn't believe me, then why why is there a book with the delectable Negro? And see, for them, it's a conscious effort to eat our brains, to eat our bones, to eat our skin, to eat our flesh. That's why they're getting mad. They're they're getting mad because what they have realized was that during the time of the abortion, our fetal tissue was used for HEK 293. Oh yeah. You better wake up and understand what you're eating in these snack foods, what you're digesting in these snack foods. Because if you don't wake up, you're still a zombie and you're still eating the flesh of your own people. One person had said, in a video the other day, I was looking on social media. Why are Americans so fat? Because we practice zombieism. And zombieism is literally just a catchphrase of cannibalism, a nuanced cannibalism. It's funny when you see the news stories of uh, a cannibal being taken out or found out. And it's not like they'll find that he's eaten one victim. (laughs) When you usually see those cannibal stories, they have like 50 or so victims. Why is that? Because they become addicted. This is why the most sides don't look. Don't don't eat the flesh. (laughs) We're unclean flesh. For a reason. There's psychological things involved. There's spiritual things involved. Same as when you eat anything that's unclean. You're, you're, You're picking up something in that flesh, you're consuming something in that flesh that will cause you some issues down the line. But we have to understand that in the age of the zombieism, you you have to understand, even past, Pastor Kelly uh, yesterday when he went and he did his Facebook Live, he pointed out some things that are phenomenal. Of how white supremacy operates. 
And the funny thing is, is that the way white supremacy operates, it's like if you are kind of outside of the scope, right? You're not in the 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 predominantly white or European or Western European nations, they kind of look at that and they just roll their eyes. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, they like to boast, boast themselves up. They like to puff themselves up. Yeah, we understand. We, we've dealt with that. But they don't say anything about it until they get sick of receiving the money and they say, no, nah, we can't do it anymore. We, we grew a conscience all of a sudden. All of a sudden, we grew a conscience. I don't want your money anymore. Oh, okay. Time to bomb, time to bomb you back into oblivion. <laughs> it's like the loan shark. Oh, you took the money. You took the money. I didn't know how much it would cost me. I didn't know what the cost would be. It killed my family. My nation's no longer producing any babies. There's so much demonic stuff and wickedness. It's never happened before. You took the money. You took the cup of wrath. You took the blood. And now you getting mad that you a zombie? You took the cup of wrath of the most high's people. And now you're complaining that you're a zombie. Oh, it felt good eating them brains. It felt good drinking that blood. It felt good uh, what that blood was producing for them Rolls Royces, for them mansions. But then you realize, oh man, there's a body attached to it. There's a people attached to it. Oh, you realize that there is a an Elohim that's looking and you're being cursed. See, it's it, sinning is all fun and dandy till you realize when those sins have caught up with you. And then they want to complain that the sins have caught up with them. Oh, we got to target the, the immigrants. <laughs> For real? <laughs> We're immigrants. Okay. No, 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 no. You, they even want to use the, 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 the verbiage wrong. We are not immigrants. We are just the people of formerly enslaved. Get it right. We're, most of us are sticking around here because we, we just want our reparations. Yo, okay, so they owe me about uh, $350 million plus <laughs> that's at least a, a one bill. I'm sticking around for that one bill and then I'm going to cash it in uh, at a bank somewhere else so I don't crash anything. <laughs> But see, our people have also gotten that zombieism. Now I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep eating the flesh. Cause why? Cause it's comfortable. That's all I know how to do. All I know how to do is just be a zombie. 
<laughs> you ever watch those movies like the back in the day, Dawn of the Dead and everything else? They just move around, walk around. All they're trying to do is just eat the brains or eat the flesh. And then, you know, they just get shot up and like it's nothing. Because that's, that's what happens. That's what they believe is our destiny. Because to them, we're just a forsaken people. That was Isaiah 62. That's what they believe. We're a forsaken people. Because why? Because they want to live the lie. Well, see, we made you nothing because when you were transported to this new world, quote unquote, when you're transported to this new land, I can keep my name as the slave master, but you all can't. I can keep my heritage, but you all can't. Because why? Because that tells on me. That tells on my actions. And if that tells on me and it tells on my actions, then that means that there's an accountability that I may not necessarily have to deal with, but there's an accountability nonetheless that my generations will have to deal with. Do you hear the talk? Self-preservation, self this, self that. Why is that? Because they can't do something that we've told them needs to be done. This is out of our hands. I'm sorry. They can keep shooting up as much as us as they want to. Pretty soon, they won't be able to do anything like that anymore. Pretty soon, it won't be that they'll be able to get to their guns. Pretty soon, judgment will be on them. You can write all the manifestos you want. Who is that supposed to convince? Is that you feel good? <laughs> well, here's what I feel good. I feel good in this word. I feel good in, in what was here in Genesis through Revelations. Even in the handpicked parts. We're not even talking about Ezra or Baruch. Oh, man, no, stay away from that. We're not even talking about Maccabees. Mm -mm, get me away from that. Because why? Y'all, your generations before you did that. And they couldn't even understand the warning label of if any man adds or takes away to these books. They couldn't even understand that. And they cursed themselves. See, you better understand what it is, the trap that the Most High has laid on out for them. Uh, you don't really get what that social credit score is looking like and what it's designed to be for them. I'm telling you, you have to understand, before the Most High releases his people, you get a chance to kind of glimpse into their future. You get a chance to see where they're going, and that's not a very pretty reality. Oh, man, it's cool to have all this uh, tech and all augmentations in the body. See, do, do, do you get that, family, why they were cool with the piercings, why they're cool with the tattooing, why they're cool with all this other stuff on their skin? Because do you understand what is going on with them? Like I've said, branding and tattooing and piercings, if you read in the word, it's always been about an ownership. Who owned you? 
when I first saw it, well, they were trying to push that that tattoo and stuff clear in late ninety nine or late nineties up until now. Why were they trying to push the tattoos and stuff like that? Because really, I'm going to tell you, tattoos really weren't that big amongst black folks. Because why? Because if you're really heavily melanated, nobody can see that tattoo. You, you, you get a, a tattoo as a really hev- heavily melanated black person, it just looks like a scar. What's that on, the, on your skin? You got skin cancer? No, it's my tattoo. Where? Can't you see it? Nah. <laughs> what? That was never us. That was never our culture. Tell me how many cultures in Africa does tattoos. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. That was always them, but they didn't even understand. Even when they used it in their cultures, it was to denote ownership of that individual that had been tattooed. Who or what owns you? See, you can't be a zombie unless something has infected you. What have you been infected with? See, it's funny because those movies actually do try to tell y'all something. They don't even try to hide it anymore. You've been infected and you've been branded with Babylon. You got Babylon on your brains. So you want to eat more brains because you. this is a death culture. Get them brains up. Because why? I want to eat away your ability to reason. I want to eat away your ability to analyze. I want to eat away your ability to pray. Because why? You do not have any power once you've been branded. You better understand once you've been branded, you better conform You don't want to get that social credit score messed up. That social credit score will allow you to eat. That social credit score will allow you to sleep in your house, in your bed. You you mess up that social credit score, you're just sleeping on newspaper. You be out in the streets. What happened, man? My social credit score is low. What'd you do? Man, I just told somebody I didn't like what they were saying. Yeah, you don't say that anymore. Did they shock you with the implant? Yeah, I got like 50 of those shocks. Nose started bleeding and everything. I thought I was going to die. And then you see the Scandinavian countries are the first ones. Oh, I like the digital implants. It's so great. Don't you know? These things are the future. Oh, this is so great. I don't know. I don't know if you really understand this. Forgive me for my poor dictation of a Norwegian accent. That was the best that I could do. I spent some time in Norway too. (laughs) It was a Nordic slash English accent. (laughs) 
But they're like, oh yeah, put it in my body. You don't even know what you're putting in your body. Oh, just put it in my hand. Have you ever read the word? Um, we, we've read it. We read it about the, the Christ feller. But uh, we really cannot identify because uh, we've never been in slavery. But we take our own people as slaves. We've done that for thousands of years. You kind of understand that if you watch the Vikings movie or television shows or regular history books. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't like history. CRT. <laughs> oh. Oh, Lord. I'm trying, family. That was kind of Irish. I was getting to the Irish and Scottish thing. Maybe it was uh, the Irish spring. You know, I was, I was smelling myself. Of... <laughs> the luck of the Irish. But, I, but I'm telling you, it's like, do you not read what the word, re do I not, is this not interpreting? Do these words that's, that I'm reading, does it not make the same sense to you? Well, it does, but man, you know, we're silly nations. <laughs> you know, we've hardened our heart to this word a few times. We only use this to enslave y'all. Because if you understood, it, it's funny how you, look, they telling themselves in those manifestos, I don't identify as a Christian, but I do identify with the Christian values. Well, what's the Christian values? Enslavement. This dude literally told on. <laughs> he told on that, he told on, he danced on the, the ecumenical body. He literally told on them. Look, I don't identify as a Christian, but I identify as a value. Why? What's those values? Because it enslaves us. It enslaves black folks. It makes them docile. They accept heartbreak. Because why? Because they have to accept it. Because they're a zombie too. So when they get shot dead, they'll eat their own and then keep it moving. He literally indicted the ecumenical church see you don't understand what the words that he was saying because you have to understand whenever there's judgment time it's like this you have so much pain you can't be quiet like you want to you understand what i'm saying the most high he is an interrogator. He will make you open your mouth whether you want to or not. Let me get into this. Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city, 
Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. And when he fought in the day, as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem to the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the rest, the west and toward, and there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the, the saints with thee, and it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in the day, in that day, the li that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and, it, and in winter shall it be. Here we go. Here we go. Zechariah 14 and 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon, south to Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place the ben from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses and men shall dwell in it. There shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. inhabited. Okay, that's future prophecy. Okay, that's when we're back in the land. But I want you to understand this because there's some things that's going to be taking place when we leave. And here it is, Zechariah 14, 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall come, consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. Okay, a great tumult. You're seeing the tumult. It hasn't been manifested yet. Okay, because now what they're doing is they're walking into that manifestation of what the word has declared. See, you have to understand there were certain things that we were keeping them away from. See, if they had it their way the whole time, we would have been in war the whole time and an outright war the whole time but what we were doing we had the sense enough to say hey you got to pump your brakes oh you don't you, you don't believe in our cause no not really oh okay you don't want to do that no not really oh okay because you had to understand, if we didn't support something, it usually ended up in failure. There were many wars that we were in, but our hearts weren't in there. And if our hearts weren't in it, we weren't in it. They say that World War II was the Great War, and that's really because we had our hearts in it. Then after that, it's like, okay, well, I'm sorry, but mm, I thought we were going to get, you know, a quid pro quo, this for that. Oh, no, no, but thank you for this. Thank you. We put something on the books, but mm, if you get it, you get it. And then our hearts were never truly in any of the wars ever again. 
which is why they've had a difficulty with all of their battles that they fought since <laughs> World War II. Because here it is. Here it is. This is this is what I want you to understand. And this this is in future prophecy. This is prophecy that's happening to this very day. It's happening right here, this very day. Zechariah 14, 13, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor do you understand this okay they're starting to fight each other and and let me tell you this you're gonna have a, a, a more of an internal fighting than anything else because you have to understand there are folks that are fighting for the image of white supremacy and there's folks that's fighting for the ideology of white supremacy there it, it's a fight that's why i say and that's what we've been communicating stay out of their fight because their fight is amongst themselves to do what I, well, I just want to enact evil this way. Well, I just want to enact wickedness this way. Well, no, I want it my way. Well, no, I want it right wing, left wing. It doesn't matter. The bird's fighting. <laughs> the bird is fighting itself. Don't mess with the bird. Calvin Andrews, thank you for the gift. Hallelujah. Don't mess with the bird. Let the bird fight itself. <laughs> well, no, I got to save the bird. Let me save it. Please don't fight yourself, bird. <laughs> Would somebody please help Big Bird? <laughs> Oscar the Grouch. Elmo, help! <laughs> Sunny days. <laughs> this ain't Sesame Street. Just leave Big Bird alone. If Big Bird, if Big Bird wants to do the scene from Boys, from Boys in the Hood. Uh, let Bing, let Big Bird swing on himself. How did Big Bird get uh, 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 get a get a get a fist out of them feathers? <laughs> let him peck peck his own self to death. Uh, that's not our fight. And Judah also, here's Zechariah 14, 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. Why? Because this isn't our fight. Because why? Because the Most High is setting up. He's setting up their zombieism to, for zombies to fight against themselves. It's a death culture. This is why it says, come out of her. Partake not in her sins. Because why? Because a death culture just leads to death. How many times have people tried to be heroes and they ended up dying in the process? You're not going to be a hero in this. 
Just let the Most High do his thing. No. What they want to do, they want to rebel against the Most High, and then they say, well, what happened? Why is not anybody helping? Because here's the thing. The Most High told us to be still. And see what? The salvation of our what? Of our Elohim. Not jump in the fight, not go into their 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 self-destruct mode. No, not me. I'm I'm good. I'm sitting here. Because why? Because this is a witness for the generations. Because what's going to end up happening when we leave? They're going to be fighting each other. There's going to be hostility and bickering. This next iteration of Babylon, this ten-toe kingdom, isn't going to have it all together. But here we go. Isaiah 14 and 14 continuing. Well, let me continue from the, the top. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And this is important. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. You understand, they're going to be wiping each other out, and when they're wiping each other out, that's valid Jehoshaphat. Ride up on them, take what they do, <laughs> take it all, grab it all. See, they were so worried about flesh, they started to consume each other. See, you understand that's literally happening right now. They're consuming each other. We're awakening out of our zombieisms. They're going straight into it. Because they don't know how to repent. They don't know how to turn away from wickedness. See, we're telling you the mechanisms of we would have healed Babylon, but she refused to be healed. Why is that? Because vanity has caused them to indulge in their evil imaginations. The problem is, they haven't realized that for a long time they've been in this zombieism. And now it's just getting even worse. Because now the other nations are trying to explain to them, you're in a state of zombieism. You're not winning this fight. You're losing this fight because the other nations see it. You understand that that's what they're literally going to do. They're going to fight over America. See, it has to be internal fighting. Then the nations try to jump on into this, and then they get messed up. We just always would think, oh, it's going to be World War Three, and it's going to be in Europe. Wrong. Because the scriptures already told you what World War Three looks like. Who's going to want to stay? Who's really going to want to stay when things are getting blown up and bombed out? 
no, nah, I'm going to stay here because when it gets better, it's going to be better. And, you know, because they done told you what they're going to do. They said that they are going to bomb this thing and the kingdom come. Man, they have songs about this. You can't be telling me that you're not singing about this and that's not what you're going to do. Stop. Because what? Because out of your, out of your, your heart. That's what the tongue is saying. The tongue is just speaking what your heart is saying. And now you're singing about it. And now you, you, you're prepping your people. Oh, we're doing some drills, but don't worry. It's just drills. I don't know about you, family, but. I always looked at if the if our perceived enemy was is doing something, you probably want to see what they're doing, and then you know maybe take them seriously. <laughs> I mean, oh, hallelujah. Because this is what they're doing. Here it is. This, this is the setup. Let me finish this up. Hallelujah. Um, Zechariah 14 and 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Up oh, there are those feast days. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And in the family of Egypt, go not up and come not that have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that keep not that that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see it therein. And in the in that day there shall be no more shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Wow. There's a lot of, there's a handful on that one. Because what goes on during that day? There's a there's a distinction that's made between those that serve the Most High and those that serve themselves. See, I believe that you'll still have a remnant here in America, but it's just going to be fewer and far between. I believe you'll have a remnant in Europe. It'll be fewer and far between. I believe that those those nations that built their their cities on Egypt and on Babylon. There'll be something there, but it's not going to be what you think. Those nations that choose to serve the Most High, they're going to be living abundantly. But what we see here, family, we see the beginning. See, they're looking at their end. We're looking at our beginning. Because, see, for us to begin, what happens? What happened when was a nation? Can a nation be born in one day? Well, there was a nation that went up on out of Egypt. And when they went up on out of Egypt, what did they have? Wealth. They had treasure. 
But this is going to be a different time because not only will that happen, but it also says in this word that the heathens will be bringing up the gold and the silver. Again, family, they're not mad at us. They're mad at him. They, they're mad at who we represent, and that's him. They're mad at prophecies because they can't stop it, which means that they can't stop us because we're his people. They're mad at this word. So family, on a week uh, that, that should have been a discouragement, let this be an encouragement because the Most High is with us. His plan is working. His plan is moving. And all we got to do is stick to his plan. That's it. Hallelujah. So with that said, family, I'm, I'm getting ready to get up on out of here on the eve of this Shabbat. Thank you for those that have contributed via Super Chat, Super Sticker, Cash App, Patreon, PayPal. Appreciate the support. Hallelujah. Stay encouraged, family. Because we're covered under the shadow of the Most High's wings. So with that said, family, shalom, salam, siyami, shalom, peace and blessings, Israel.